Life is never so cut and dry. History is made from a series of unexpected events. Nothing can be planned. It had appeared to be a normal scene. A happy couple pleased with the birth of their firstborn, a son. A father's prayers had been answered. He had a boy. It didn't matter to her whether it was a boy or a girl. Motherhood had been her dream for as long as she could remember. But there was something different about this child. They both knew it, but never shared their thoughts. And even the child knew that his life would not be normal. Reed Richards had always been the victim. In every school, every bully chose Reed as his personal scapegoat for the miseries in life. It was easy to pick on someone who was weak, but Reed had a guardian angel that almost always came in the nick of time. Ben Grimm didn't like bullies. A truly strong individual didn't have to squash little guys to get ahead. A truly strong individual only squashed those who took advantage of others. Once again, Reed had been saved by his friend. It was humiliating how many times Ben had to come to his rescue. Worse was always going home. Reed's father was disappointed in the way his son had grown up. This was not the boy he wanted. Instead, his father took a shine to Ben. Ben reminded him of himself when he was younger. Reed's father seemed to forget that he was never a savior for the weak like Ben was. If anything, Reed's father would have been the first to dunk Reed's head in the toilet. It was difficult for Reed to listen to his father praise Ben. Whenever his father spoke to him, he always had a different tone in his voice. He was always upset over something, the way Reed talked or what he said. He hated how Reed dressed. He didn't like the books he read. He didn't understand why Reed never wanted to watch football or basketball with his old man. It all amounted to the same thing. Reed was not the son he wanted. One thing you get when growing up in a family like that is a skin as tough as leather. Reed had one thing that his father could not destroy. He had his mind to escape to. His mother understood him better than he understood himself. She wanted to listen. If only he would say something that she could listen to. She could guess what he would say, but he never would say it. So all she could do was keep praying that one day he would. He might have too, if his father hadn't walked in. He would never understand. In life, there are always those who are unable to see the future. They are generally the same people that stifle progress.
to say. What words from his mother would ever help? But Reed was a survivor. He had to be. Life goes on, and so does creation. It didn't matter that Ben didn't understand Reed's work. It was about the specifics. It was about respect. Ben respected everything about Reed. He was the first to call him a genius. Ben took everything with an open mind. It was in his nature to observe everything about a given situation first before making a comment or getting involved in it. Sometimes, not knowing is better. No matter how hard Reed tried to keep it simple, it still didn't make any sense. Even a football field analogy would be futile. Was there a better way to explain it? <laughs> Who knows? This wasn't everyday stuff. It would be easier to explain why women chose the men they fall in love with. Why had his mother chosen his father? He would never know. Anyway, with this stuff, even Reed was grasping at straws. Sometimes it made perfect sense to him, and other times it was as if someone else had done it. But Reed was willing to give it his best shot, explaining what he could to his friend. Reed went on and on. Poor Ben could only stand there and watch Reed's mouth open and close. It reminded him of the moments during a football game when his coach ranted and raved on the sidelines. Ben must have missed that class. If Ben ever felt something all around him, it was time for a shower. Finally, there was something tangible for Ben to grasp. Candy bars and things he'd seen in the movies. Yet every film that Ben ever saw featuring this type of crazy science always ended badly. Even Reed knew that. He had to remind himself that the rules in which movies are written do not control life. Life was generally mundane. Though there are those who would always argue that life was always stranger than fiction, otherwise it would be boring. How would we feel if an alien toy manifested itself on your doorstep? Would it make any sense? Ben knew there was more to this. There had to be. He knew Reed too well. Reed fancied himself a maverick. He wanted to be a champion in his own right, and this was a way in which he could do it. He also knew that this was Reed's game. If he wanted to play it like this, so be it. As usual, timing was everything at the Richards household.
Interruptions always came at the worst moments, always catching Reed off guard. Reed's sister was a regular tabloid reporter searching for an ugly story. And she loved playing the true blonde. She was a natural. The thing with Enin was she was like most women. She never took no for an answer. If she wanted something, she was going to have it at any cost. Reed hated being told what he could and could not do, especially when it involved blackmail from his little sister. Some people are cut out for certain things, and others are not. Everyone has their specialty. Understanding quantum mechanics was not a highlight in Ben's life, nor was memorizing offensive plays and the importance of a linebacker on Reed's must-do list. But that's why they were great friends. They didn't need to see eye to eye. They learned from each other. It didn't always work out, though. But at least they often tried. That was far more than Reed's father ever gave him. Yet Reed constantly reminded himself that it didn't matter. He would be better than that. He had his work. It was difficult for Reed to sleep at night. His mind was always buzzing with numbers and experiments. Reed's father thought a comet had hit the planet. At least for Reed's sake, it better have been caused by some outside force. If it wasn't for Reed's mother, there might have been a murder that night. To her, all that was important was his health. He will always be her baby, no matter what age. To his father, the important thing was getting to the bottom of his madness. The kid was obviously born on a bad day. When push came to shove, he couldn't have actually been his. He never would have spawned such a mess. It was easier for his father to yell than to listen. Every time he listened, he got a headache. But as I said before, his mother wanted to listen. Reed just never spoke to her. There was only one thing Reed lived for, and that was science. Here, Reed was a god among men. Reed was well beyond the other students. They were obsessed with the way magnets worked or bought home science kits from electronic stores for two weeks allowance. He wasn't the best public speaker. He had to stay glued to his notes or he couldn't talk. As Reed gave his presentation, someone else watched from the crowd. Their interest was more than just a curious teacher or an awe-inspired parent, for every word Reed said made their heart pump faster. This kid was pure genius. And within that split second, Reed would never be bullied again.
Reed's father hated salesmen. He mistrusted anyone who came to your house, especially if they came praising your misguided son. There had to be a catch. There was always a catch. Nothing was ever for free in this world. That was the way his father lost his money, and his father's father lost his money. It was not going to happen again, especially from some wannabe hotshot in a beret. The guy refused to drink his coffee. What the hell was wrong with his coffee? How come his coffee isn't good enough for him, but his son is? <laughs> Go figure. For the first time in Reed's life, his father was happy to have him. He always knew his boy wasn't a chump. At least, that's what he'll tell the neighbors and the guys at work. Reed marveled at the building. He and Ben had gone past it many times before. But like most people, they never actually looked at it. That was the purpose of this place. Reed was awestruck by his reception. Here was a real scientist, over twice his age, shaking his hand. His father never once shook his hand. Plus, Professor Storm even knew everything about him and his work. He even had a pretty daughter. What else could one ask for? This was the greatest day in Reed's short life. He didn't know that it was all slowly going to come crashing down around him. It is sometimes difficult to define normal. It was a normal day where normal people went about their normal business. Huh. Or was it? I don't think so. Normal things didn't fall from the sky. Just ask Icarus or the people of Dresden. That's because this wasn't a normal day. Nor would it be a day that these normal people would ever forget.
some were more frightened than others. This man knew that his world would collapse. In the back of his mind, he'd feared this for a long, long time. <laughs> Must have been how David felt when he stood before Goliath. Or how anyone feels when the Grim Reaper turns up at your door, knowing your name. The first rule of thumb is never believe everything you hear. Question it all. In fact, if someone tells you something, don't question what they're saying. Question why they're saying it. The bottom line is no one shares anything unless they want something. History is written by the winners. It is made, created by the ruling class. Money talks and people listen. Democracy can only work if the masses actually pay attention to what goes on. <laughs> Ask them in Germany in the 40s. Ignorance kills. Anyone can be force-fed a line of crap as long as it's candy coated with sugar. For some people, their 15 minutes of fame have turned into 15 years of lies. A constant barrage of verbal pyrotechnics in which the words themselves are as vacuous as the people who speak them. Thank God, actions speak louder than words. Real heroes do exist. But with every hero, there is a counterpart. The alter ego. The living crooked id. When you look into a mirror, what do you see? Is the mirror looking back? Or are you gazing at yourself? Who's really in control? Who looked first? For without a negative, there can be no positive. It is the rule of the universe. Some rules are made to be broken, whereas others, the whole existence of the universe depends on them. Sometimes, there are those that are even willing to forgo all that. The blame should never be pointed only at individuals. Rarely can a single being act without an audience. They both feed on each other. People allow things to go wrong. Tragedies are created by a series of events, not isolated incidents. Titanic didn't sink because it struck an iceberg. It sank because it was made. The whole concept of a bar fly is being able to disappear. Yet, somehow, there are those that won't let you. By nature, people are social animals, some more social than others. Of course, there are those that don't go for the social thing at all. They prefer to break up harmony wherever they can. To them, being social is breaking a few heads. Huh. These people never learn. For when you look for trouble, all you find is trouble. Not necessarily the kind you had in mind. The shame of it all is there is injustice everywhere. Most people are dumber than they look. 
Reason is what they call a breakfast cereal. It has no place in the lives of most. And then we question why we have attention deficit disorder, learning problems, and a high divorce rate in this country. When will people ever learn? Probably only when it's too late. Fortunately, every possibility is also available in this universe. If there is a chance, then it can happen. If things can change, then they no doubt will. There are places in America that get a bum rap, some justifiably so. And what these reasons are, reasons for everything. There is a reason why pretty girls sell toothpaste. Who's looking at the teeth? How many times have you seen an ad that you pinned to your wall, looked at every day for a week, and yet two months later haven't a clue what it was selling? Ask anyone, and they all have the same story. Authority also has a way of striking fear in others. Hey, look, no one wants to get caught with their pants down when it happens. The syndrome called tunnel vision sets in. It also adds to the fact that people generally fear what they don't understand. And that, in return, goes back to my previous comment about normal people. Normal people fear things that are not normal. You want to call it abnormal? You want to call it different? Well, depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on, I guess. the rhetoric. Let's get to the real game. He waited hours for this moment to occur. Everyone was on high alert. You could smell the tension in the air. He was a sitting duck out there and he knew it. I've been in that situation before many times. It's not fun. As long as no one panics, the deal should be straightforward. First off, the buyer has to like the package. The foundation of capitalism is buyers and sellers. The price is dictated by demand. In some transactions, there are no guarantees, so you have to bring your own. He you planned for moments like this. But he didn't plan for everything. <laughs> Who could? No one expects blinding hot death to rain down on you from above. Or the people that you knew and trusted to be killed before they hit the ground. Yeah, there was no point running. He grieved silently for his comrades as he took the pain. His heart stung more than his flesh. The anger built up inside. The rage filled his blood and his mind. He 
his cover was blown. But it didn't matter. He had no life anymore. Once again, he had been betrayed by existence. It was futile. He wasn't allowed to care. But there was light at the end of the tunnel, and she stood at the exit. She didn't have to ask what he was thinking. <laughs> she knew. He'd always been waiting for someone like her. He'd given up hope that she ever existed. Now he could live again. Not every haven is as it is imagined. Some are just plain creepy. No one likes an upstart that bosses people around. It's difficult to look at Cyclops and not laugh. He's too emotionally charged, too much the control freak, and takes himself way too seriously. Plus, I mean, the way he stands makes it look like he's got a stick up his backside. And yet they stood there and listened like polite students. Colossus wouldn't worry. He could take him down if he needed, but uh, Beast never liked to be patronized. Sarcasm would only go so far. All in all, it was a good team, and they knew it. There was an understanding between them that felt right. It was like a separated family reuniting after many years of being apart. Nothing needed to be explained. No introductions needed to be done. The only thing on their minds now was, what was this place? And who put them together? It wasn't about trust, it was about understanding. Even when he heard the voice in his head, it made the whole experience that much more mind-blowing. It was gentle, almost calming. Just the sort of tone that the Pied Piper would have played for his rats. beast a friend before, or offered him drinks from a floating tray. He didn't look like much. The wind would blow him over if he wasn't in a wheelchair. But hey, he was the boss. He had a gentle look in his eye. Probably would fail miserably as an apprentice, but this was his show. He was in control and he knew it. He didn't have to show off. Storm couldn't take much more of this. It wasn't in her rebellious nature to accept everything at face value. She was street smart and it showed. Even though this Xavier wasn't a threat, what was his game? Xavier was never one to hide anything. He felt that honesty was the most important thing we had. He especially had to be honest with his team. What he was asking of them could possibly turn into the greatest sacrifice any one of these mutants had ever dreamed. He had to show them that they were all equal in his eyes. He respected them and their so-called abnormalities. To him, that is what made them special.
He'd told the tale many times before. It was less painful now. In some ways, it even seemed like it was someone else's memory. Look, no one likes the truth. Most of the time, it's harder to fathom than a lie. All of them could relate to being a scared child hiding in the corner of a bus. It was something that none of them would ever admit. But they'd been there. The first mission with a new team is always a little nerve-wracking. One can only hope that everyone does their job. But I've been in too many situations where I've been let down. Too many promises have been made as individuals tend to overestimate their abilities. <laughs> I've even seen the biggest loudmouths turn into gun-shy cowards. But this team worked well so far. Like clockwork, they played the roles perfectly until the real trial would begin. And that's when it really counts. The bigger the enemy, the bigger they fall. That's what I've always believed. Size doesn't matter. It may be another thing to be fried in a bus, but I've had worse. But as in any group dynamic, everyone has to have a say. That's the only problem with democracy. It tends to be slow. Ask any tyrant. One leader, one command, one order. Take away protocol, and you got nothing. Storm just had to believe in herself. No one else in her past ever did. <laughs> so why should she?
someone in the shadows that was tired of running. He'd taken all that he could take, and he was exhausted. Now it was his turn. Bobby Drake was more than just a frightened 15-year-old kid. He had a natural gift that he wouldn't accept until now. It was Bobby's shining moment. He never felt victory before, but it would end. He was reminded of the harsh reality. He was not normal. None of the X-Men were. The masses would never understand. It's easier to blindly hate than accept something different, but, and I've said this all before, there was nothing they could do. Hey, that was life. The rules have been written ages ago. Meanwhile, there was someone that understood human nature better than humans could themselves. The best way to analyze something is to become an objective outsider. To Magneto, he didn't have to become anything. He was an outsider. No matter how many times he tried to fit in as a child, he wasn't allowed to be like the rest of the kids. He was a victim of the human condition. The history of evil dictated no other path for Magneto as a boy. His fate was signed, sealed, and delivered on the day he was born. He'd grown up now. Tolerance had disappeared somewhere in his teens. Now, Magneto didn't even bother to go through the motions. He despised everyone equally, as long as they were human or against him. They were the enemy. That's the way Magneto liked it. He killed so much that it often became boring. That was something that I also understood. In a way, Magneto and I were kind of alike. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but uh, it was true. In fact, you're probably wondering who I am. Well, here's where I come in. Surprised? <laughs> Who'd you think it was? Bub.